Hello everyone, Dinas here with Action VFX. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to build a bullet hit on wood effects in Adobe After Effects. We will be using Action VFX stock footage collections such as Wood Bullet Hits Volume 1, Bullet Hits, and Free Bullet Hole Textures to do this effect. Anyway, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so this is the plate that we have. The first thing we want to do is, of course, we want to track this shot so we can put our effects. We can use Mocha or 2D Point Track to track this, but I want to use 3D Camera Tracker. 3D tracking the entire shot would allow us to just pick any point on our shot instead of just retracking every time we want to add our assets. So let's get 3D Camera Tracker. Once the camera is finished tracking, let's select a 3D point of where we want the bullet hit to be. I want it to be around here on this tree as he ducks. So select that point and right click and create null and camera. And now we have a 3D camera and a 3D null based on that point created. So now I want to move it to exact place that I want the bullet hits to be, which is around here. So now let's bring in our assets. So the first asset that I want to add is a bullet hole on our tree here. So let's add this pistol wood entry number 12 from our bullet holes collection. So now let's put it in position. Let's toggle switch here and turn our layer into 3D. And then we're gonna go to the track null, press P, and then we are going to copy the position and paste it into our bullet hole. So let's rename this to bullet hole. And there we go. We have our bullet hole now in position. So now what we're going to do is we want to integrate it better. So first scale it down. And then of course, we want to trim our bullet hole so it only appears when we want to have our bullet hit, which is maybe around here. So I'm going to select the bullet hole and Alt, close bracket. So now the bullet hole only starting to appear on that time. So now what I want to do is I want to make the bullet hole to be more integrated with the rest of the wood. So let's double click it. And then we want to create a mask around the hole. So pick the pen tool and start drawing and then press F and feather it. Now let's go back to the comp and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to toggle switch again and turn the blending mode to overlay. So now let's blend it even more by adding tint and let's disable the mask for now. For the tint, we want to map the black color to a dark color in the plate. So maybe this one. And then for the white color, we want to map it to a bright color around the bullet hole. But now we have our bullet hole getting darker. So let's reduce the amount of tint until we have our bullet hole integrating with the plate. Perfect. Now let's add some Gaussian blur to blur it to match the plate. And then we want to animate the scale of the bullet hole. So go to the first frame of its appearance and then press S and then we're going to scale it really small and then add keyframe and then move one frame forward and then turn it back to the size that we had before. So now the bullet hole is opening up instead of just appearing. So now let's add our wood debris on our bullet hole. I'm going to use this wood hit front number two from our wood bullet hits collection. So now let's go to the first frame and solo our wood hit layer and we are going to find our wood debris. There we go. So what we want to do is we want to move the pivot point of our layer to that origin point of the wood debris. Select this pen behind tool and move our anchor point there. So now if we scale or rotate this layer, it would hinges on this point. Now let's disable the solo and then turn this into 3D layer also. And then we are going to move to the frame of where the bullet hits happen. And then we're going to drag the timeline of our wood debris there. And then we're going to once again, copy the position of the null and then paste it to our wood. So now we have our wood coming out of the bullet hole. So now let's adjust it, move it a few frames forward, and then we are going to scale it. Perfect. So now let's do some color correction. Let's get curve to our wood and then let's match the color to the color of the wood on the tree. 
So let's darken it up and then let's maybe rise the black levels a little bit. And then we're going to go to the blue channel and then we want to increase the blue and then reduce the red just a little bit. So now we want to add a smoky impact on our bullet hits to make it more powerful. So to do that, I'm going to add this wall hit front number six from our bullet hits collection. Now let's remove the black background of our wall hits here by getting shift channel and then take the alpha from luminance. So now we want to do the same thing again. Go to the first frame, let's solo it, and then move the anchor point to the origin of this hit. And then let's disable the solo and turn it to 3D. Then drag the timeline of our wall hit so it appears at the same time as the other elements. And then we're going to copy the position of the null and paste it again to our layer. There we go. So now let's scale our wall hit here, make it quite big. Now let's add some color correction to our wall hits here. So this is a fun trick for the color correction that we have shown before in a previous tutorial about bullet hits, which you can check out in the description below. So let's add fill. And then for the color, we are going to pick the color of the wood. There we go. So now the color matches the rest of the wood. However, because of the fill effects, we are losing a lot of details that we had before on our smoke. So let's bring back those details. Let's get fractal noise. And then we want to set the contrast quite high. And then for the transform, let's scale it down. And then for the blending mode of the fractal noise, we are going to change it to screen. And then let's reduce the opacity a little bit. There we go. So now we have introduced those details back into our bullet hit smoke. Okay, so everything is looking cool. The timing of our bullet hole is still off because the bullet hole is appearing a bit way too late. So let's move it one frame and play it again. Okay, so now we have our effects. However, our elements are currently moving way too fast compared to the backplate. So what we want to do is we want to stretch the time of our elements to make it go as slow as the backplate or at least close to. So thankfully our elements is 60 frames per second. So if we stretch it out to slow motion, we have a lot of hidden frames that will fill in those stretched out gaps. So let's go to right click, time and time stretch. So because this footage is 60 frames per second on a 24 frames per second composition, the maximum we can stretch our footage until we start running out of frame and getting clunky slow motion is around 250%, but we want to go beyond that. So I'm going to go with actually 500%. And then for the wall hits, I actually think that the 250% is perfect. So we're going to keep it at 250. Okay, we can see that our bullet hits is moving a bit slower. So let's solo both of our wood hit and our wall hits so we can see more clearly what's going on. And here we can see our wood hit is moving really clunky because we are going way past the maximum stretch, which is 500% instead of 250%. So we have a lot of missing frames that we need to fill in. Thankfully, After Effects has a feature called frame blending to deal with this. So let's select our wood hit. And here we have this column for frame blending. So if we hit this and then play, we will see that our slow motion is a bit smoother because After Effects has now tried to fill in those missing frame gaps. But it's still very clunky, so we are going to go to the frame blending again and choose another method. So click again, and now we are using the pixel motion method for our frame blending. So now let's play again, and now we have our bullet hit slow motion to be more smooth. Great. So let's disable the solo, and then here, I actually want to scale our wood hit again to make it a bit bigger. Okay, so looking pretty good. However, here you can see we have this really weird color glitches on our wood heads. That is the result of our frame blending. So let's fix that. I'm going to go to tint and we are going to put a tint on our wood head, but put it below our curves. Let's disable our curve for a second as we want to disable the tint also. 
And then we want to map our white color to the color of the brightest point in our asset and the dark color to the darkest point. And then let's enable. There we go. However, we are also losing a lot of the color texture from our asset along with the glitch. So let's bring back those details by adding another curves and put it above the tint. And then we want to create a contrast. Basically, we want to mimic the original color of our asset. Okay, so this is pretty good. Add the curves again and then disable the solo and we have our bullet hits. So now I want to do some minor adjustment such as I want to have the wood debris to be more prominent. So I want to actually put it on top of the wall hits instead of behind it. And then I want to drag through the timeline and look for the part when the wood starts to explode and then trim that part and then bring it forward. So now the wood is more visible and also the bullet hit is a bit more sudden. And then I want to add drop shadow to the wood. So the purpose of the drop shadow is just to add a bit more dimension to the wood. And then we want to select all of our elements and then add motion blur. And lastly, duplicate the backplate, put it on the top and mask out the objects that are in front of our elements. And that was the tutorial on creating wood bullet hits effects in Adobe After Effects. Of course, on my final shot, I added more of those bullet hits across the entire duration of the shot. And if you want to purchase all the VFX assets that I used in this tutorial, you can check out our website at actionvfx.com. At Action VFX, we provide high quality VFX assets for your VFX needs. We have fire, explosions, energy, and many, many others. You can also sign up for our Action VFX subscription starting at the low cost of $14.99 a month. This is the most affordable way to access our library and you can cancel anytime, no contract. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know in the comment section below what kind of tutorials that you'd like to see next. And see you next time. Bye bye.